OK, so we've got our distribution of fields. We've got an infinite slab of space with electric fields pointing upwards, magnetic fields pointing out of the screen, and no fields at all outside. So now we need to go through Maxwell's equations and see if this configuration actually is consistent with them. So let's start with Gauss's law. So for electric field, Gauss's law tells us the integral over a surface of the electric field dot the normal vector dA, that's the surface integral over the surface, equals the sum of the charges inside uh, with a constant 1 over epsilon naught. Does that work in this case? Well, if we pick a volume out here or out here, the electric field is zero, the charges are zero, so it works. How about if we pick something actually inside this lab? Let's pick a, a square, something like that. There again are no charges, so that must equal zero. Now in this case, on the sides, the electric field is perpendicular to the normal vector. The normal vector points outwards. Electric field points upwards, so that right angles. So that contributes nothing. At the bottom, the normal vector points down. Electric field points upwards. So you get an area times the electric field strength. But it's minus. At the top, they point in the same direction. So you get plus area times electric field strength, which is, of course, zero. So, because the electric field is uniform and all pointing in the same direction, it does indeed obey Gauss's law. We can do the same for Gauss's law for magnetism, which once again is that the integral or surface integral of the magnetic field, dot n dA over any volume is in this case zero, because there are no such things as magnetic monopoles. Once again here we have the magnetic field pointing sideways of uniform strength, and if we pick a volume, a box, like so, the contribution to the surface integrals from the sides is zero because the normal vector is orthogonal, perpendicular to the magnetic field vector. One end gives you a plus value, one end gives you a minus value, so that comes out as zero. So it's passed the first test. This configuration obeys both of Gauss's law, that for electricity and that for magnetism.